Hey, what's up, church family? Uh, welcome. We wanted to shoot a quick video to you guys today to answer some uh, frequently asked questions, as it were. Uh, yeah. We are in the middle of this uh, generosity campaign that we are in, man. So good so far. This it has, has been, been really, really great. Four generations, yes. if you haven't been tracking with us, four generations, and it's yeah. been phenomenal um, on Sunday mornings and through our kids and student ministries and community groups. Everybody's been kind of walking this journey together, and it's yeah. just been a phenomenal season the last what three weeks now yeah 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 something like that so we're yeah we're right in the middle of this and if you've been tracking with us on sundays you know um that we've really been taking this opportunity to not just uh do the traditional kind of fundraising thing mm -hmm. like we really felt led by the lord to to really dig some deep roots go deeper in our discipleship and have god challenge us in our faith mm -hmm. um and so man we've been moving through uh, this idea of what is what is the power of a seed? Yeah. Um, this idea of a seed, and so the first week we talked about that, and then we started breaking down. Okay, what are the different seeds kind of of the kingdom, mm -hmm. really? And so we've got the power, uh, the seed of the gospel, yep. um, the seed of prayer, which we just finished up this past Sunday, which is awesome. Um, seeds of love, we're gonna be talking about that uh, this next Sunday, and then seeds of faith mm -hmm. is what we'll kind of land on. And so we're we're really trying to uh, sink our teeth in. So what does it look like to grow in our faith and our discipleship and let God do something within us Yeah. Um, as we talk about these different seeds of the kingdom and how we can participate in that? It's been really cool, yeah. really awesome. Well, that's what it is. I mean, it's really just a discipleship opportunity. It's yeah. for us to go deeper with the Lord as we seek after Him. And mm -hmm. typically when we seek after Him in seasons like this, especially collectively, um, the Lord does something within us that's mm -hmm. oftentimes greater than what He even does through us. Yeah. Um, and so we're getting stretched as we seek after Him and just go, Lord, what do you want from me? Mm -hmm. What? How can I sacrifice? How can I surrender to you fully to be a part of what you're doing, not just here and now, but also for future generations yeah. to come? And that's what we want to be about as a church. And so if you've yeah. been around on Sunday mornings, we've hit on that. We've talked about the importance of just seeking after God in mm -hmm. this season and how we're just asking for people to do that themselves and with their family and in their marriage. And then we're just asking for a hundred percent engagement. We yeah. would love for nothing more than our church family to be a hundred percent engaged in yeah. what God is doing here and invested in the kingdom work that's happening here. And just the unity that comes around that as well. There's yeah. something significant about a body of people, a body, a church that's mm -hmm. coming together and they're unified under a single mission and singular vision yeah. of where the Lord's that's, leading them. That's been one of the coolest things to see um, is we've got our whole church family linked up in yeah. this, journeying through this together, all unified together uh, from kids to students and adults alike. And so even my kids, it's been really cool to, to see and be able to have conversations with yeah. them about how uh, even in their own little way, they're being challenged to to learn what it means to be generous, mm -hmm. following in the way of Jesus, and how yeah. He has called us to be generous. And so, man, I would I would echo that the yeah. the unity of being able to participate uh, and experience all this together with the Lord has been yeah. really really powerful. Well, and you got really the cool. different like age demographics, but then you've also got two campuses, and yeah. some of the campus people from Social Circle or from Walnut Grove, like they've never even interacted or met each yeah. other, but yet they're on the same journey together. And so, I feel like there's something significant in that. Um, and then so finally, uh, we just we need more space. Um, yeah. The Lord has blessed us here and uh, at Church of the Grove, and He's sent more and more people our way, and we are just simply out of room. Mm -hmm. And so part of the Four Generations initiative is for us to expand facilities um, to be able to accommodate and reach more people in this community. And we know this community is growing too. And so we know that we're kind of at a crossroads. And if we don't do something now, um, then in the future, we're going to be very limited in yeah. um, how the Lord can use us as a church in this community. And so the time is now for us to be able to kind of sow those seeds of faith. And so that's kind of the vision behind what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And let me just say that if you have one of these books, we walk through all of this in this book. And so I'd encourage you to use that for some bathroom reading perhaps or something. <laughs> um, but there's the vision behind it. But we still know that there's other questions that people have asked. And so we just wanted to take a few minutes and try our best to answer questions and try to be as clear as we possibly could on what we're doing and mm -hmm. what we're asking you to do in the season ahead. And so why don't we start there? Yeah. Um, what are we asking people to do? Man, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you know the answer yes. to this. Yes. Yes. We, I, we are asking people uh, to 
really lean in and commit to being a part of what God is doing right here. Yeah. Uh, obviously, with uh, expanding space, being able to make more room to reach more people who are far from God mm -hmm. and to be able to lead them to become followers of Jesus. And yeah. that's what we were asking people to do, yeah. uh, going back to that 100% engagement. Mm -hmm. We know that, uh, that maybe you can't give a lot, but every little bit counts mm -hmm. and that whole unified principle of us all being in this together. Yeah. Um, so we're asking everyone to just lean into this with us yeah. and participate. Yeah, and part of that we've talked about how we wanted people to pray mm -hmm. and fast yep. um, throughout this season. and. You know, the prayer and fasting could look different for, you know, different individuals or families, but people to really seek after the Lord to ask, hey, how do you want me to contribute yeah. to four generations for the next two years? Yep. And so that's been the question that we've been wrestling with. And it's been really encouraging to hear some of those stories of just how people are wrestling with that and how some of them have come to conclusions and yeah. some of them haven't yet. And some of them have been stretched kind of beyond what they initially thought that they would maybe give. And so it's cool to hear some of those stories, but that's first and foremost what we're asking people to do is pray, seek yeah. the Lord, and ask what is He wanting for you in the season, and how does He want you to contribute and to stretch your faith yeah. as we're sowing seeds of faith for future generations. And then we're also asking people, though, to, to commit to give. Yeah. Um, and I know we don't like to talk about giving a whole lot. It gets kind of creepy and weird, or it can <laughs> at least, which it doesn't need to be because yeah. what we're doing here is an act of worship. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really us saying, man, Lord, you blessed us with everything. And so we want to be generous with the resources that you have given us. And so we're asking people to not just pray and fast, but to take steps of obedience to what yeah. the Lord tells them. Mm -hmm. And so we're not trying to pressure people to give. We're not trying yeah. to force people to give or trick you into giving. Mm -hmm. We're just asking, pray and fast, yep. seek the Lord, and whatever He says, be obedient to that. And that's what we're trying to get around it. Because at the end of the day, that's what following Jesus is, yeah. right? I it's mean, listening it's, to His voice and doing what He says. Yeah, yeah. learning to hear the voice yeah. of the Lord yeah. and follow Him in obedience. I love, uh, I can't remember who said the quote, but it stuck with me. Um, that God always reveals Himself on the other side of obedience. Yeah, there's and blessing so, on the other side of obedience. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. And so um, that's that's kind of what's on the table. Yeah. So obviously, there are needs physically and things that we need to, to be able to do to expand space. But um, what's on the table is for us to experience God in a new way yeah. as we trust Him and walk in obedience. Absolutely. So, and yeah. so, so with part of that, too, is you know we, we've given out these commitment cards. They were in the back of our books, and we've got stuff... Mm -hmm. uh, additional one extra copies of these sitting around the lobbies and stuff on Sunday mornings. But this commitment card is uh, really a tool yep. for us to be able to kind of use to see where the Lord is leading us. And so kind of on the front side of this, there's some kind of, uh, you know, numbers there to kind of say, hey, we need so many people to commit to give this much. That's just a guide. Mm -hmm. That's not a set thing in stone, but it's just to kind of help you think through where could I possibly fall on that chart. And on the back of the commitment, go ahead. Which on there, I just say that's so helpful to see that broken yeah. down and to be able to know like, okay, you know, we don't have to have all this come from like one person or whatever, but to know we need 10 people who can just commit to give this much yeah. over the next two years yeah. or whatever. That's so helpful to see. And I think it's good to look at that and then go, okay, this is where I maybe feel comfortable and then kind of look, okay, yeah. what's the maybe place where I don't feel comfortable and maybe that's God where the Lord's stretch. leading me. Yep. Um, and then we're asking for people to commit. And mm -hmm. so... Um, we're asking for people to fill out these commitment cards and some might ask, why do we need to fill out a commitment card? Can't we just give, you know, by ourselves in Great the quietness question. of our homes? <laughs> and you absolutely can do that. Um, but again, this is about a hundred percent engagement. We want mm -hmm. everybody to be connected, everyone to be involved. And we need these commitment cards to help us make decisions, yeah. um, for future projects and how things will play out financially for us from bank loans, which we'll talk about in a second, and from building schedules and all the stuff that is yeah. going to happen with that. And so we've got to have some of these things in hand to be able to know what we're working with mm -hmm. and if people are really behind this project or not. And so mm -hmm. that's why the commitment card is there. Um, but what we're asking is, you know, there's, there's a spot for what I normally would give um, in the course of a year. And so for some of us, you know, that could be maybe a thousand dollars or $10,000 or a hundred thousand dollars. It also could be zero. And if it's zero, that's okay. That's okay. Write yeah. zero there. Um, there's not like we're going to show up at your house and be like, you are to zero. Like there's other concerns here. We need to talk. <laughs> we need to have a come to Jesus meeting. That's not it at all. 
it's this is an opportunity for you to take steps of faith to journey forward in your generosity. Yeah. And so writing what you're normally giving and then what you feel like the Lord is calling you to give in expanded giving mm -hmm. and then times that by two because it's for two years. So this will end in March of 26. And then um, you'll total all of that up and put that on the commitment card with the addition of the First Fruit Sunday, which mm -hmm. we'll talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, so we're asking for people to fill that out and then to bring that with them to church on February 25th. What is February 25th? Sunday. I don't know. It's February 25th. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's, oh, it's Commitment Sunday? It's is that what commitment? you're looking for? Yes, yeah. it's Commitment Sunday, February 25th. Yes. And so we'll have as part of the service that morning, we'll be bringing these cards forward mm -hmm. as a uh, kind of a dedication to the Lord, a, 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 a act of worship, a sacrifice, yeah. if you want to say it that way. Um, to the Lord um, that day, and we'll do that collectively mm -hmm. together as a church. And again, that 100% engagement mm -hmm. is key in that process. And, you know, I was thinking about this uh, earlier, <clears throat> why that's so important, because you could just, you know, in the quietness of your own heart, say, I, I want to give this much, or this is kind of what I'm planning, I'm going to do. But what's the significance about actually bringing something, yeah. you know, and, and having a Sunday or a dedicated time where we, we bring something together. And it, I think it's being able to physically mark a moment, mm -hmm. you know, like they're all throughout scripture. There the are spiritual people who, workers, yeah. spiritual, yeah, people who hear the voice of God and then they, you know, throw up some stones or whatever. Mm -hmm. like they're marking a moment where they heard the voice of God and saying, I'm going to respond to that. Yeah. Um, and so it, it, it's more than just filling out a card. Oh, I mean, this, sure. is, this is yeah. saying, hey, I'm going to mark a spiritual moment of where I've heard the voice of God and I'm committing to respond to that yeah. in the presence of the Lord and God's people yeah. together. It's just something yeah. powerful there. Well, and it's and it's also in some ways a uh, sense of accountability too. Yeah. It's saying, hey, this is what I'm committing to. Now we understand that you know conditions might change, people sure. might lose their jobs or change or move or whatever. Totally understandable. But you know, Lord willing, this is what yeah. me and my family are going to be able to give. And there's an accountability piece to that too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's fun. Uh, I try to fast several times a week. And, you know, when people know that I'm fasting, it seems to be a lot easier to continue yeah. to fast that day. Yeah. Um, but when no one else knows that I'm fasting, when I get yeah. to about lunchtime, I'm like, well, I'll just go ahead and eat something. You know, yeah. like there's not a accountability piece there. And so I think having something like mm -hmm. this also helps provide some uh, accountability. That's great. So that's good. That's great. So right after that, we'll have Commitment Sunday on. Uh, that's February 25th. 25th. Yeah. Um, Which let me just say that if you're not here on February 25th, there's always opportunities to make the commitments. Like this yep. is not a, if you miss that day, you cannot make a commitment. Yep. We'll be taking commitments all throughout this whole two season, yeah. two years. Um, and so don't feel like you're left out if you're not here on February mm -hmm. 25th to make the commitment. But just to reiterate, the importance of that, getting them sooner, is that it's really going to inform a lot of decisions we have to make throughout yeah. the building process Absolutely. as we get this thing yeah. off the ground. So, And yeah. then two Sundays after that, so yeah. March 10th, is what we're calling our Big Give Sunday, or if you come from maybe mm -hmm. a traditional church background, First Fruits um, yeah. offering. And this is where we're kind of starting to put into action uh, our commitments. Mm -hmm. And so this is where we're saying, hey, you know, I might give, uh, you know, let's say $5,000 over the course of two years, but I'm going to start my giving generosity in this season and I'm going to give a thousand dollars off the top and I'm going to bring that for, as my first fruits. Yep. And there's something significant about giving your first fruits mm -hmm. uh, to the Lord. I mean, that's what the tithe is all about. And we'll talk a little bit more about that on Sunday, but um, this is an opportunity for us to, to bring kind of the first fruits and make mm -hmm. a sacrificial offering on mm -hmm. March 10th yeah. towards four generations to kick it off. Yeah. That's yeah. so good. That's so good. So make sure you got those days marked down. Um, and you're praying and fasting, seeking the Lord on how you should respond yeah. and take those steps. And, and let me just say there. on top of that too, in the praying and fasting category here, like we we are with you on that journey. Mm -hmm. Like we're doing this ourselves. Absolutely. Um, but we're also here to help you in that journey. Mm -hmm. And so if there's like questions you have or man, I feel like the Lord's maybe saying this, but I'm not totally sure. We would love to have those yeah. conversations with you. Nothing gets me more excited than people wrestling with what they feel like the Lord is saying to them yeah. and trying to live in obedience. And so we're here for you if you need people to help kind of walk you through that process or community group leaders or other yeah. leaders in your life. Yeah, man, that's so good. That's so good. Um, so one of the other things that we've talked about that's a little different for how we're approaching this whole journey, um, you know, typically 
kind of the older way of doing it. Not older way, that's not a good phrase, but traditional tra way. the traditional way, yeah. yeah. Uh, where you just have your typical, this is our kind of budget for mm -hmm. the year, and then we do kind of a, a different And you got the like the campaign. thermometer on the, the wall, yeah, and yeah. you're trying to th the thermometer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're doing is more of a one fund approach. Yeah. So could you talk us through a little bit about kind of what that entails, how that might be a little different? Yeah, so this isn't designating offerings. Um, and so mm -hmm. when you're um, making these commitments and then eventually writing checks or giving online, however you choose to give, um, this isn't, you know, I'm giving a hundred dollars to the building fund and a hundred dollars to the general fund. It's all one fund. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're one church, we're doing ministry. That's all going to do ministry and to reach this community. Mm -hmm. And so this is really just, Hey, we're all investing in the four generations fund. Yeah. Um, whether that's our normal giving or our expanded giving, it's all going towards that. And part of that is, helping fund a building and expand ministry territory but all of the money is going to ministry but it's in one pot mm -hmm. and so this is just to show that hey we're all in this together yeah um and so we're all investing we're all connecting in this together and so you're not writing separate things or giving mm -hmm. to separate designations online mm -hmm. it's all four generations one fund okay. and it's all helping contribute to the mission and the vision yeah. that god has given us yeah. which what i love about that is kind of going back to what we talked about earlier is this is not just solely a generosity campaign yeah i mean this is yeah. us saying hey we want to be a church it's a local yeah. church family here that is generous and that is also for every generation yeah um, we want to be able to hand the baton to the next generation and blow as much wind in their sails as possible, saying, Absolutely. go, do the work of the kingdom, yep. multiply the gospel. And so what I, what excites me about this is that, man, yeah, we've got needs and we're going to see God do that. We're going to, that's going to happen. But it's also like, this is setting up what the future of our church looks like, mm -hmm. being a church that's for every generation, mm -hmm. unified together. Man, um, that's that's what I love about this. Yeah. So the well, one fund approach makes sense yeah, in that. Yeah, yeah, and I just love just to echo that. Like, it, it, I really feel like this whole commitment process and this whole campaign mm -hmm. is really uh, a get to rather than a have yeah. to. Oh yeah. And I think sometimes when we approach these uh, kind of situations in our life and we're asked to be generous and to stretch us, like it can almost be like, oh. I have to do this yeah. or I have, you know, and, and it really is, man, I get to be a part of reaching the gener next generation. I mm. get to be a part of what the Lord is doing. Um, you know, if you're in social circle, I get to be a part of investing in what's happening in Walnut Grove. And there will be people in heaven one day that we'll be able to meet that we had an yeah. impact on that we had no idea of their names or faces yeah. or stories, but God is so gracious to allow us to mm. invest in those and sow seeds of faith. And so yeah. it's a pretty cool opportunity. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, there were some questions uh, that we've recently got just about debt yep. and kind of what our philosophy is on debt and um, what the plan was. Are we planning on building in stages and not going into debt and what that looks like? Mm -hmm. And so uh, some of that is a little bit up in the air still. Um, and a lot of it depends on the commitment Sunday and the first big give Sunday that will happen on the 10th. Um, but uh, as a church, you know, no one likes debt. No one wants to sure. go into debt. Um, you know, we believe that, you know, there's different types of debt. There's credit card debt or consumer debt mm -hmm. versus, you know, having a mortgage or something like that. There's mm -hmm. differences in there. Um, but we believe that we're kind of standing at a crossroads. Russ yeah. has said that a lot on the Sundays, um, that we're at a crossroads and we've got to make a decision mm -hmm. of, are we going to commit to reaching the next generation mm -hmm. or are we going to just kind of continue the status quo? And so mm -hmm. we believe that we're kind of at a season where we can't afford not to move yeah. forward with what the Lord is calling us to do. Yeah. And so ideally that wouldn't include any debt. Um, a lot of that just, again, comes back to the commitments and what people are financially able to give. Um, but mm -hmm. we're okay with debt if it's helping us as a tool mm -hmm. to be able to reach the next generation. And with that, um, we are going to be smart with that. Like we're not going to get, you know, a debt that's so extremely crazy that we can't continue to do day to day mm -hmm. ministry. Like we're going to be smart in that. And our leaders and elders are making sure of that. Um, but we are OK with debt mm -hmm. if it is helping us accomplish the mission um, in the way the Lord's called us to. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Man, that's great. Yeah. Um, so kind of, <clears throat> you know, continuing on. We've also had some other questions about other ways that people could engage, participate in, um, besides just giving cash. Yeah. What else you got there? Uh, yeah. And so uh, 
there are opportunities uh, for us to give. I mean, I think a lot of times we're short-sighted and maybe how we can give. Mm. And so we think of, you know, what's in our current bank account um, or lack thereof, right? And what we can give out of that. And for some of us, that's really all that we do have to give. Um, but for others of us, um, there's uh, creative options for you to be generous with the resources that God has blessed you with. Mm. Um, there's people that have stocks and mutual funds, and um, they've been blessed as a result of those investments, and they can give out of those. Yeah. Um, we've got a thing on our website where people can give stocks, and they can give mutual funds, and they can give those just super easily through mm -hmm. our website. Um, there's also opportunities. I know we just heard a story actually today of a couple that um, is in the process of selling their house, and yeah. um, they're going to make a pretty large profit off of their house from when they originally bought it, and they were like, we want to make a substantial donation towards awesome. this campaign from the sale of real estate. And so for some people, they are blessed with that, yeah. and there might be an opportunity for you to sell off real estate or to sell off some other type of item you have, an extra mm -hmm. vehicle that's just sitting there that you want to get rid of, you've been needing to get rid of anyway, and you can sacrificially give that and have the proceeds come to, to the Four Generations mm -hmm. campaign. And so that's just kind of expand our vision of what yeah. giving can be and just go, man, Lord, is there something maybe mm -hmm. in my life, if there is a possession of some kind that I've been holding on to mm -hmm. that maybe you want to have me give, then I'm willing to do that yeah. and uh, and just be generous with that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, that's so good. So helpful to just, uh, like you say, expand our vision yeah. to know that, man, it's not just this certain just cash or like what's in my bank account right now, but what are, let's, let's take stock of everything in my life yeah. and see how all of it could be used to further yeah, uh, the kingdom, kingdom work. So that, that's really good. Yeah. Really good. Um, the other thing I was going to, one of the questions that, you know, it's in the, in the book as well. So if you guys have your booklet, there's a frequently asked questions thing in there that covers a lot of this. Um, but people who are new yeah. and they're jumping in for the first time, you know, they're maybe kicking the tires on church at the Grove. Uh, you know, why, why would they want to participate? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and there's, and that's a great question because there's a lot of new yeah. people that we've I mean, seen. I, I see mean, new faces every Sunday. Yeah, it's practically like a new church yeah, um, in awesome. some ways over the last few months. Um, and so that's a great question to ask. And first, I would just say, like, there's no expectation mm -hmm. for people to give. Um, I don't, I don't think that even for people that have been here for a while, I don't think there's a you have to give or else you don't mm -hmm. belong here kind of thing. Like everybody belongs here. Um, but there is an opportunity for people to give. And so, you know, it's kind of like, you know, do you want to um, be a generous person and reap the blessings of that mm -hmm. from the Lord, or do you not? And I mean, that seems kind of harsh, but I mean, in some ways, like there's an invitation for people that are new to mm -hmm. prayerfully consider, hey, Lord, do you want me to participate in something like this? Mm -hmm. And watching them take those steps of faith can be just as impactful and valuable in their life yeah. as it is to someone that's been attending church for years or decades. Yeah. And so I think there's an opportunity, there's an invitation, mm -hmm. there's not necessarily an expectation, but there is an invitation for them to be a part. And man, the Lord blesses people that are willing to take yeah. steps of faith. And so yeah. that's... Yeah, well, and, and, and to follow Jesus... Yeah. To really follow Jesus means to follow in the way of generosity yeah. um, to some degree. And, and so, uh, man, and we would just say, we, we say it a lot around here that uh, you don't give to the church, you give through, through the, the church. church. Yeah. And so um, if you're wrestling on why you should participate or kind of on the fence about that, kicking the tires, uh, we would just say we are about doing uh, the kingdom work here yeah. um, in our community, but also... Uh, around the nation, around the globe, with community, with ministry partners, and so when you do uh, lean in and participate with us in that, uh, I can honestly say, I mean, you're helping to bring more of the kingdom of heaven yeah. to this earth uh, in that way. And yeah. so, well, and just to you know, throw in some scripture here in uh, Malachi chapter three. I mean, the Lord tells us that we can test him in this. Yeah. Like the Lord doesn't say that often in scripture that we can test yeah. him on things. Um, but when it comes to generosity, mm -hmm. 
Man, he says, test me and see if I don't yeah. pour out my blessing upon you. And so, mm-hmm. like, there's an opportunity for us. And it's not that we give so that we can get mm-hmm. in return. But, man, the Lord is so gracious and so faithful. And there's something about being generous mm-hmm. and the Lord providing that it takes our faith to another level. Yeah. level, And it helps us to see that he truly is our provider. Yep. And he's our sustainer. Mm-hmm. And he's the one that helps us continue on in life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a reason that in the Lord's prayer, it's give us today our daily bread. Yeah. And sadly, we live in a society, and in some ways this is good, in some ways it's bad, we don't have to worry about our daily bread. Yeah. Um, we aren't really concerned mm-hmm. about where our next meal is going to come from. Um, but man, when we get stretched and we mm-hmm. start to have to really rely on the Lord, we get to see yeah. Him come through for us, and yeah. it really helps take our faith yeah. to another level. And just, I mean, personally, it's been so eye-opening uh, for me. You know, Jesus talks a lot about money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in proportion to a lot of his other teachings, I mean, yeah. money's up there. And uh, when he talks about, hey, you can't bo- serve both God and money, money, mm-hmm. it's mammon, mm-hmm. that spirit of mammon. And so what's been uh, really great is to be on this journey and to be wrestling with the Lord and asking him, where is the spirit of mammon in me? In yeah. me? Mm-hmm. How much of it is uh, got his grips in me? Mm-hmm. And what do I need to be able to bring to the light? And say, Lord, you know, yeah. um, free me from that spirit of mammon, you yeah. know, because it's, is pervasive in our culture today, yeah, absolutely. and so, yeah. Um, yeah. so that's what that's what's on the table is yeah. is to be able to experience God in a whole new way, yeah. uh, with really just in this one aspect of generosity and our mm-hmm. finances and all of that. Um, and so, what we're asking you to do is to lean in with us, um, man, and, and to participate that hundred percent engagement. Let's all be unified in this together, mm-hmm. whether it's a little or a lot, whatever that looks like, hundred mm-hmm. percent in, um, and be praying, fasting, how God wants you to be a part of that. Uh, and this this idea, we say it a lot too, that uh, we really do want something for you, mm. not from you. Yeah. Um, and so we just believe that there's blessing on the other side of obedience mm. and living God's way uh, is really beginning to enter in and live that life to the full that, mm-hmm. that Jesus yeah. has on offer for us. Yeah. So. And I would just I would just echo with that too. Like there are some people in our church family that are blessed and they are able to give large sums. And there are other people that don't have as much and they're not able to give larger sums. And like, that's not what the Lord looks at at all. The Lord is looking at the heart. And so, you know, there's the story of the widow's might. The widow gives everything she has and the Lord talks about the blessing that comes upon her Mm -hmm. versus the rich person that gives a lot Mm -hmm. more, but it's less in comparison. And that's, that's what we're looking at. It's not equal gifts, but it's equal sacrifice um, that we're asking for our whole family to come around. And so just to reiterate again, we're prayerfully committing to mm-hmm. what the Lord wants us to have. We're filling out these commitment cards. We're bringing mm-hmm. these ready to go on February 25th. Um, we're bringing them that Sunday. And then we'll take them you know, before then, after them, if you can't be there on that day, but February 25th. Mm-hmm. And then um, our Big Give Sunday will be March 10th. Um, it will be the weekend after United Weekend. And uh, that's where we're asking people to bring their first fruits. That should be... One of the biggest offerings that Church of the Grove has ever had should come in on that day mm-hmm. as we all kind of come ready to yeah. give and to be generous and to kick off this two-year campaign mm-hmm. together. Um, yeah. yeah, and so we're excited. It's yeah. it's it's a, a new season for Church at the Grove, and uh, man, uh, there's a, an incredible harvest, I think, mm-hmm. that awaits us, but we've got to sow the seeds yep. to be able to reap that harvest. And so, And the truth is, I mean, we're all standing in the middle of a harvest that was sown before us. Oh, absolutely. And We're so, standing on the shoulders um, of other people that yeah. before us. And so we have a responsibility to all lean in, pitch in together, and again, turn back around and sow and plant for, for the next uh, next harvest, next generation. So don't don't miss out on what God is doing. Yeah. Um, don't miss out on how he wants to grow you, stretch you uh, in your walk with him. And, uh, and man, it's going to be good to see to see what God does. Yeah, it's going to be season. great. I'm yeah. excited. Let me pray for you yeah. and uh, we'll we'll stop. This video mm-hmm. went a little longer than I thought. So <laughs> okay. let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for uh, just being that good and that gracious God mm-hmm. uh, that loves us right where we're at. And uh, Lord, you're a God that has been so faithful to us in the past. Mm-hmm. And Lord, you will continue to be faithful to us in the future. And so Lord, we just come before you now, Lord. And I just pray for the people that are watching this and for the people that are part of our church family, Lord, that are just wrestling with what 
you are um, asking of them in this season. Um, Lord, I pray against the spiritual attacks of the enemy that would try to convince us to not participate or to not um, be involved in your work and the ministry that you're doing here at Church of the Grove, but I also pray just against our kind of sinful flesh that mm. so t- often wants to shortchange what you're wanting to do in our lives. And so, Lord, let us just have an open heart and open ears mm. to be able to hear your voice. And, Lord, I just pray for the boldness and the mm. courage to be able to step out in faith and to trust you in mm. whatever you call us to. And, Lord, we know that ultimately your ways are the best ways. And so, Lord, we want to do what is best. And so we want to follow your voice. And so we just ask for your leadership and your guidance in that. And, Lord, we just pray that you continue to have your hand upon our church and our church family. Uh, Lord, we're so thankful for how you have used us in the recent days. And, Lord, we're just so expectant in what you're going to do in and through us in the future. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would continue to bless us as we walk through the Four Generations campaign and expanding our uh, ministry opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, that you would just continue to bring people that are far from you to come to know your love and your Mm -hmm. grace, what we've all all experienced. And, Lord, that lives would be changed as a result of the seeds that are sown through four generations. And so, Lord, we love you. We thank you again for today. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. We love you guys. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And... If not, we will see you on Sunday.